Hey, hello everybody. Here we are. Huh, Nanette Saylor and... I guess you could see me for a second here. <laughs> yes, there you are. Hi, Gail. Hi. I'm, I'm literally buried in my art supplies here. <laughs> so you'll see more of my hand speaking than my, you know, my face for today. Yes, so Gail and I are trying something new. For those of you who have seen our previous videos and have been with us on our live recordings, Gail and I are trying something new today. We are in our separate spaces and enjoying this settling back in after a busy holiday season. Both of us had lots going on. So, and you know, and it was fun as we were starting to think about this session today, I realized that this is the perfect time to introduce why it is that we have chosen to come together on Zoom for exactly this reason, so that creators all over can be together through this technology. And so you've seen Gail and I creating together in the past where we've been sitting next to each other, either um, at a table or in a creative space. And today you're gonna see us creating separately in our own spaces. And hopefully we have gotten a little better at figuring out how to show you what we're actually doing with our hands. <laughs> so. uh, we have it. I think we have it. Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, as always, we want to invite you to create the space, to come to this, huh, come to this opportunity, to come into this invitation to honor your creative self. I'm actually thinking of closing my lights for a second while you do this. <coughs> I'm going to lower the Excuse me, both Gail and I have a little bit of a tickle from our, our travels. Yeah, I love that idea of closing the lights a little bit, dimming. If you're not in a space where you can close your eyes completely in, in some, some of the meditative circles, some of the yoga circles, you may have heard the expression, close the shade on your inner eye, oh, which is simply to bring your focus into, uh, to loosen your focus, actually, is what it's all about. Give yourself a little bit of a blur. Give some attention to the light in the candle. Ah, take a couple of deep breaths. Hmm, I can feel myself taking in the energy of that flicker in candlelight. Feels good. Feels good. It's warming. It's clearing. It's energizing. And I see, I see new opportunities and new possibilities. I want to invite you to join me in the quiet as I read for you again an expression that you may have heard, a, a poem, a saying, a writing that you may have heard from us before. And in this new phase, this new year, many of us are celebrating a new year, I want to invite you to begin anew. Today I begin anew. Today I open my heart. I release all judgment and detach from all meaning. Mm. I accept simply I am. Yeah, I detach from all meaning. Mm -hmm. I accept simply I am. Today I release control. I discard my limiting beliefs. I ask for guidance and support. I accept that I am worthy and I allow myself to receive. Today I take inspired action. I invite the creative energy that is sourced to flow to me and through me. I serve the highest good of all. I accept reward and with gratitude I experience effortless abundance. 
I know I am a creator. And all is well in my world. All is well in my world. And so it is. Ah, take a minute to just take that in. All is well in my world. That brings tears to my eyes. Mm. That's beautiful. Yeah. And so our mission today in this, in this time together is to really in, to, to take that energy and infuse it into our creations and to allow that process to evolve an anchoring expression or an anchoring word. So Gail, why don't you share with us a little bit about your experience today as we get ready to create. Okay, sure. Experience today and, and yeah, and introduce us to some of the materials that we might use. Well, I woke up today trying to, almost feeling forced to choose a word or a sentence that would describe my intention for 2018 or the coming days, the coming months, the coming years, or even the next moment. And I've been thinking about it. I thought about it on a vacation. We went on a family vacation and I tried to do it through, I thought that the initial thing I would do was write a haiku, which is mm -hmm. um, a little poem stanza which uh, would be uh, five syllables, then seven syllables, then five syllables, then seven syllables. Is that how it goes? Wait, is it? Yes. Five? Yeah, it's five, seven, five. That's yeah. correct. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's, and then I've been researching it and I saw that there's so many ways you could do haikus. And one that I wrote um, when we were on this trip was I wrote, renewal beckons, lazily approaching hers. Savoring, knowing, possibility. Mm. And oh, I, I did that. trying in my, I have a journal which I don't keep regularly, but that's one of my intentions for the year. And I did a little drawing of a woman with some, a butterfly or just something that inspires the concept of possibility. And then today when I woke up, I felt a little stuck as many people do and many creatives do. Um, as many of us do, when we wake up in the morning, we have our to-do list, but there's something else that's nagging at us that we need to do for us. That should, that's not on the to-do list, that we totally have no memory of. We know, we know instinctively we need to do something, but we don't know what it is. And what I wanted to do today was to find my word, my sentence, or a guiding light for the year. What I decided to do was pick up a piece of paper. That's all I did. Mm -hmm. And next thing I did was I picked up a pen. And I just started to do some writing that some of you might know as creative flow writing or automatic writing or Julia Cameron in her book, um, The Artist's Way talks about morning pages. And it was just simply free flowing writing, the written word with no intention other than writing. And I started to do it on a slant this way. And I just started to write words and words, and I didn't worry about the quality of my writing or the direction of my writing. Nobody who knows me would even recognize this writing at all as mine because I really wasn't thinking. I was just, whatever words were coming to my head, and even if I got stuck for a second, I, I said to myself, Gail, just go. Just, I'll write the word go and just continue that way. And that's what I did, and I even wrote on top of my words in a different direction. And I'm not really sure what this says, but it felt good as I was doing it. 
as it will for you if you start writing. It could be on loose leaf paper, it could be on lined paper, it could be in any direction. It could be with your eyes closed. It could be with your non-dominant hand, which I guess I could have done with my left hand if I got really stuck. That is what I do when I draw. And um, I find words and I find designs and motifs that I wouldn't find otherwise. They just happen. So I did that. And next thing I did was I started, I had some watercolors out and it's a teeny little travel set. And I just started to paint on top of those words, not worrying if it was going to obscure it or whether it was going to add to it. I just started to do it. And um, I remember doing that with other things where first I put the watercolor down and then I write words on top of it. And next thing I knew, something else which wasn't planned happen. And I was emptying a drawer and found some paper napkins and I found some butterflies. Mm. And I think that somewhere in my writing, I may have not had the word butterfly, but it, I may have had something that implied the idea of butterfly, of freedom, of the cocoon, of releasing, of opening, of flight, of freedom, of adventure. And I chose a little butterfly and I didn't even have a scissors. I just cut it out. There was a little butterfly like this. If you could see that, can you see that, Nanette? Yes, yes, absolutely. And, Beautiful. Yeah, I didn't have my fancy art glue and I found some Elmer's glue, but I also had a stick of glue, so I could have used that. And I put the butterfly on top of that writing area, uh, above the writing area. And then I started to go through some magazines, just whatever magazines I had around. And I found several words that had meaning to me, but something that stood out was a little sentence here or part of a sentence that said, first, there's you. And I realized that that might be part of my intention for the year and an important part of my guiding light, which would be to focus on myself not as much as I do on others, but more than I do on others. And I had a pang of guilt doing that. But I tore it out and I glued it on as a reminder that I need to be a caregiver to me this year. I need to take care of myself and prioritize my needs because otherwise I have nothing to give to others, not enough. And so here I have what I determined to be what I need to do for me this year. First, there's you. Mm. And first, yeah, you know, there's so many words that I could have put on there, but I chose that. And I know that you're seeing um, a, a figure here. What I did after that was I went even further and I started to write again, the same way I did in the first place. But I had ink, I had um, some black ink. It's Speedball, but there's many companies that do this. I think they call it, uh, bleh. it's black ink. And I think somebody call it India ink. That's what it's called, India ink. And I poured some into a cup and I found I didn't have a paintbrush. So I found a straw and I started to draw with the straw, just like that, on top of the words. And I didn't care, again, what was getting covered up. I was just having fun, seeing what interesting marks and interesting designs this straw would make. I was tapping it. I was scraping it. I was dipping it and making circles. Just anything that came to mind or didn't come to mind, it was automatic like the writing. And the same with a chopstick. I dipped the chopstick in, still no paintbrush, still no professional tools, and that's what I did. And Nanette did it differently. What did you do, Nanette? You didn't have India ink. No, I didn't have India ink. And so as, as Gail's been talking, I started scribbling. Um, <laughs> 
piece of paper here. Which and is a great thing to do no matter what's going on in your life is continue scribbling no matter what. And I just, and then I allowed the words to not, I mean, I wasn't particularly attached to the words. Just as things came up, I wrote them down. And what's happening, what I'm, what I, I started to play with earlier today was the possibility that when I don't have any materials, when I've, and I've got nothing other than a plain piece of paper and, and, and a pen, what, what might I do? And this, here you're seeing a combination of both black and blue ink. And then what I started to play with was, what's the possibility of the different things that I have that could add some color, some, some, something that would, would change the way that these words are behaving on the page. And I discovered that I have rubbing alcohol and I have Q-tips. And I just started playing with the possibility if I apply, there you see it's doing it. If I apply rubbing alcohol to the words, what happens? Wow. They start to, they, it starts they to spread. Bleed. Yeah, it's they like water. Bleed. And if I start with the rubbing alcohol on the page and then add some ink. Oh, that one's not going to work. Let's pick one that's going to work. Add some ink. What do you use for ink? Is that just a regular pen in that? This is just a regular ballpoint pen. And if I just add some ink and some rubbing alcohol, now I start to get even more possibility for the bleeding. And depending on the inks, what I, what I discovered is different pens bleed a little differently than others, right? And it's just, I started to, so here, here, this one's starting to really spread a little. Oh, wow. Bit, right? And that was, that's just a different pen. Mm -hmm. And then if I were to take, see what happens. Nanette, if someone doesn't have rubbing alcohol, do you think something like this would be okay? It's um, a hand sanitizer. It has an I, alcohol. Yeah, why not? Let's try it. Yeah, so I'm just using isopropyl alcohol, regular rubbing alcohol. But why not? Try anything. Let's see. The idea is, see what happens if, if I just, you know, if I don't have a lot to work with. And as, if, as you watch for a minute, the longer this sits, the more this black is starting to, to spread. And if I add more movement. It looks like you're playing, Nanette. I am. I am. You have a plan and you're just, you're experimenting. Yeah. And you can see where the sections were a little heavier ink, I get a little more bleed. But really it's not, you know, it's just the idea is what 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 possibilities might appear in in these things? Where what am I seeing that's beginning to evolve here? So scribbles aren't just random marks. They, they express what we're feeling at the moment that we're doing those, what we call scribbles. The same with the writing. It may not have a specific meaning or be cohesive, but it's definitely an expression of what we're thinking or feeling or experiencing at that moment. And that's the most beautiful part about this. So this might look like a mess to some, but at some point, I'm either going to leave it or I'm going to obscure some of it with white paint or white chalk and I could write over it. I could do so many things with it afterwards and even create a pretty card to send to somebody or just hold it for myself as a memory, add words from magazines or books. And uh, you end up with a piece of creative inspiration for the new year. Yeah. So here I've added 
now red and started to let that play and bleed a little bit. And what is that red? Is that a marker or? This is a red, this is just a standard red pen. This one, I think, yeah, this is a Bic. Wow. Velocity. Wow. So just we don't need, we don't need any ex, uh, specific art tools for this. No, no. It's and basically I think, what you have. Yeah. And that's, and one of the things that I've really come to appreciate about this time that you and I are spending together, Gail, is mm -hmm. that now I am, and I've done this in my past where I've, I've been inspired to create in, in lots of different ways. But just in the last four days, <laughs> what I started to do is carry this notebook with me. And I, I created this a while ago where I put in the notebook circles that I outlined from a CD. That was the, that's the template that I used. Mm -hmm. And so I have this notebook of blank circles. Every once in a while I sit down and I create a few more blank circles. So at any time, whether it's with a pencil or a pen, or maybe I have gel pens, maybe I don't, maybe it's markers, doesn't really matter at any time I can start an inspiration that might become as detailed as this colorful mandala. Wow. Or might become as not detailed as this swirl, mm -hmm. right? I have a couple, uh, or maybe, so I was at an event and I was capturing the concepts of and some of the inspiration that I had at the event that I was at. I are was those words? Them, and these are words, yeah. I love the idea of the mandala based on words. And I think that um, whoever's watching should think about or could think about using words in that way if you don't want to write on a blank page. Give yourself a parameter of a circle or a square or a triangle so the space doesn't look so big. And yes. write that area in any way that you choose to do. And the, the back, these simple little scribbles that we've created, you can keep these. So one of the things that I have a lot of fun doing is keeping these little scribbles in a Ziploc bag, beginning a collection of things that I can use later to infuse my mixed media collages. Some of the other things that Gail and I have done together, when you have these little pieces that you've created, these pieces of you, they can be torn up and, and incorporated. The words that you've used don't have to be as visible. The example that you saw of my mandala, th those words are clear in the picture. But just because I've covered up words in this one, doesn't mean they're not there. The expression, the energy, the, the, the essence of them is here waiting to become a part of something else or simply to stand on its own. Right. It's really what you were experiencing in that moment. So nothing could take that away from you, whether you obscure it or you make it visible. And the same way you wrote those words in the first place, you're perfectly able to rewrite words in the same vein over whatever you do later. So if there's a word that you lost and you remember that you really had that word in your mind and it was important to you, bring it back. Put it on top. I mean, I don't know, I'm using a, my new toy is a big whiteout pen. So if I had a word under here that was obscured and I wanted to rewrite it, I could just put the word back on here. I think I can. Well, that's not working too well. It makes better dots than it does words, I think. <laughs> but I could rewrite it on top of whatever I've done. Yes. With a different yeah. tool. Yeah, so even in, in with just the, the household 
tools and I love, I'm so excited. Nail polish. I love, I love that new Bic Whiteout pen idea because I had taken, I was sharing this with Gail earlier and I really want to share it with everybody here too because this is something that I have learned from working with Gail, from doing our experiences together. So you may be able to, as the sunlight is catching that, you can see that there's a shimmer, there's a, a gel pen in these designs. And when I started this, I was working only with a black fine line household marker, nothing fancy, no fancy art supply, and, um, and some watercolor markers. And I was really excited about the way that this first color, this soft purple applied on top of the, on top of the swirls and you could see the swirls through. And then I did the same with this sort of seafoam green. And then I had this little darker blue color and I made the mistake of not testing it first. And as soon as I put it down, I knew that it was way darker than I wanted it to be. And I was, looking at this big, what I saw as a giant blob on my circle design, and I was disappointed and really upset about it. And then I heard Gail's voice in the back of my head say, now, wait a minute, you can put something on top of that. You can That's put- That's the magic of all these water-based tools, right? Yeah, yeah, don't, don't, don't give it up yet. And so I looked around and I discovered that I did have a silver gel pen. But what I'm really excited about now is the possibility of adding even another layer onto this with the white dots from the big whiteout pen. Because I think that would, to add some little white dots to the dark line here, add a few that float around in the various places of the design. Really excited about that possibility. And just get another layer of this piece. And That's a new, my new toy is this yeah. big this yeah, bit. very excited about that. Because dots very are very to create dots. Yeah. It's meditative and it makes really interesting little marks and contrast on the black over here or on any dark color, actually. It wouldn't show on the white, obviously, but on any dark part. So I'm not going to be afraid, like you said, um, to create a dark space anymore, which I used to be afraid of because I could go over it with words or with dots or with any type of marks with lines. I could create lines on top of it. This is still a little wet, so it's hard to see. It just it makes a point. Oh, look how fun. Oh, I yeah. love that. I love that. So, yeah, and I was just showing that if you don't have paint and you just really feel stuck in your materials, last night I found a piece of cardboard and I started drawing on it with nail polish, which mm -hmm. was a little bit a little bit stinky and toxic. But uh, this morning I was able to write the word release on it. So, mm -hmm. I judged, but it, like Nanette said, in the future I could use this in a mixed media piece. So nothing. Yeah garbage everything is useful at some point uh, the other thing I wanted to say when I'm really stuck what I do is I go through my library of create creative books and nobody recommended these books they're books I simply used, I sat down in the bookstore hopefully some of you still have a bookstore nearby mm -hmm. and I just started going through them to try to get the little bit of inspiration, whether it was just looking at drawings or ideas for just intuitive mark making where you do the same thing that we're talking about. You just blur your materials and do interesting mark making, silly things with wire that you might have, uh, just mark making. If you have a cork, you could stamp with that. And these books really bring to light um, a new understanding for me when I'm stuck. And I really love even perusing Amazon or Goodreads for creative books with ideas in them. So when I'm feeling stuck, I just go through them and I see something. It might not be a full idea or a fully realized concept, 
but maybe an idea for something that I want to do. Yeah. So books are not gone. They're still available to you. Mm -hmm. And it's a great tool to have on your bookshelf when you feel the need to be creative. Even looking at other people's creative work can spark that that feeling within you, that right brain thinking that we all so much need from time to yeah. time. And, you know, I'm so glad that I'm so glad that you mentioned that because often I know it happens to me that that somehow I have this idea that, oh gosh, if I go and I look at somebody else's work that somehow I'm gonna be stealing it, you know, it's, it, there's there's that whole imposter syndrome that comes up that copy you know, that, yeah, copy copying their work. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that I've really come to understand, and I had this conversation with somebody just yesterday, in fact, is that there is, everything comes, all of our creations come from one center place. There is nothing new and unusual, really. You know, there is, yes, there is our perspective and there is what we're bringing to it. But the the ideas, it's my belief anyway, that the ideas, the essence, the core of this of these creations, they they fly around in our energetic awareness. And what we're doing is simply capturing it in our own unique way. And so the possibility that I woke up this morning and had the thought of creating something with a butterfly just because Gail had the same thought doesn't. Oh, I didn't know that you did. <laughs> right? Right? Doesn't, doesn't I had no idea. That somehow my butterfly is less than her butterfly or that because she put it on the page first that I can't now do a butterfly. You know, I think sometimes we, we, we have all of that crazy conversation in our heads about. We all want to be so original when we all yeah. have the same experiences and the same emotions on, right. diff on different levels on different days. And we need to express them. It doesn't matter if we didn't invent the butterfly. Right, exactly. The butterfly <laughs> appeared in nature in its natural form, and now right. exactly we are here to interpret it. Right, and whether it's an owl or a butterfly or a bird or a key or a heart. There, my butterfly is turning into a drip butterfly right now, and I couldn't have planned that myself. But I'm yeah. not going to... Beautiful. You're... More fun. You're you're having better luck with the dribbles than I am. My dribbles are dribbling quite so well. Yeah, today. the straw has been my best friend today. I I never drew with the straw before, <laughs> but I'm getting so many interesting marks. This is going to create maybe it'll probably create nothing but a big scribble. Yeah, and I I, I, I think I need to. I'm going to get up for a minute and go find the straw. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, so I think what I'm gonna do now is start on a fresh piece of paper. And just start some writing, writing about what I'm feeling. By the way, there's one tool that we've talked about, I think in some of our other classes that I love, that is my go-to tool. And it's a Stabilo, and I don't get anything for this. It's just uh, me telling you what I love, uh, favorite tools. It's a Stabilo Aquarable, which I just means it's water soluble, I guess. And it says all on it. And they all say different ones. I have some that just say all, Stabilo all. And when you write with it, it looks like you're writing maybe with charcoal or pencil. I'm just... Right now, I'm just going to do this with my mm -hmm. left hand. So I nice. honestly have no plan here. But when I activate it with some water, or I'm even going to try with something else. I've tried it with glue. I, it becomes really interesting. And yes, I'm using a paintbrush, but just by the same vein, I could be using my finger to draw with this. Very cool. Oh, I feel like a magician right now because I'm creating something so interesting with my finger and a pencil and nothing else. So yeah. it does look similar to an India ink actually, 
And if you're going to buy something on Amazon, I would say, or wherever you are, it's not an easy thing to find. I couldn't find it at my local art store. But mm. I have these by the dozen, and I give them as gifts, and I just love the marks that they make. And you could use glue on it, or you could use water. Oh, look at that. It's nice. so much fun. It's so much fun. So that's a toy that I have, and that's what I'm going to start with today. I'm also going to start writing again, and I'm just going to do freely writing, not thinking. I can't even read when I'm writing. They don't rhyme. They have no meaning. I'm thinking and talking at the same time, which isn't a great idea, but it makes me, <laughs> makes the, the, my lines and my words have just turned to actual waves or something like that. But it just makes for an interesting design on the page because our writing yeah. design. So if you say you don't know how to draw, write and write messily and you will be drawing and you'll be yeah. scribbling. Oh, I love that. Yeah, love and perhaps that. something will come of it that you like. I love doing figures, and we showed you how to do a figure in our last class, which was simply, just as a reminder, we have step one is a head, could be in any shape, an oval. You can go over it 100 times if you want or once. A neck, shoulders. Mine's gonna have a little waist. I'm making my little goddess. And hips. And her arms could be doing anything that they wanna do. So I'm gonna have arms coming. We know where arms come from. Wow, she almost looks like she's about to fly like a butterfly. She does. And that's no plan and you can do it. Three easy steps. Head, neck, shoulders, waist and then you can cut it off or you could put a little dress on it or pants or legs whatever you want and then add arms or you don't have to have arms you could just have a figure with no arms so we have an oval shoulders and i just pulling it all the way down you know that there's a figure in there our brain creates whatever it's used to creating. It knows what a figure looks like. It doesn't have to be perfect. I could have put it on a slant. And now I'm just using a paintbrush with water on top of it and the paint is, the ink is moving around. So give it a try. Just write and draw. And if you wanna add words from a magazine or your own words, let's do that today. So as Gail was talking, I was drawing mine with, again, this one is another Bic pen on a piece of paper. These little pads, I'm pretty sure I got this pad at the dollar store, little artist acrylic paint pad, a couple of little small sheets. I love that they're little small sheets, so at any time I can just pull one out and scribble on it. What kind of type of sheets are they, Nanette? Do you have a cover? Yeah, so it, they're called acrylic paint pads, artist acrylic paint pads. Uh, looks like this one is from Grand Fix. I, I don't, I'm not familiar with the company. I just okay. happened to, like I say, I'm pretty sure I probably got these at the dollar store and I got them specifically because they're small. You know, they're, they're kind of, card size they're not any bigger than oh let me see it probably tells me on here what it is yeah they're five by seven they're five by seven so Which the other could, one thing right. about this is that you can you know that's a standard framing size too so oh yeah I could, I could drop this you know i could i could continue to work on this and turn it into something and drop it into a frame and you know we'd, i'd have a i'd have my my awareness for the year, my intention for the year right here, and I could put it on my desk. Right, and the dollar yeah, store is a great resource for inexpensive materials. So when you're walking through, whether you're looking in the kitchen section at um, tools, you know, whether you're looking at bamboo, bamboo skewers, or yeah. you're at 
something, you know, more fork-like. We could always use this to paint, to draw, to dip. Um, look at everything as an art tool. Everything that you come across is a potential art tool, um, including my straw. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I wanted, I'm glad you brought that up again, because I just, I ran earlier and got a straw. And mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I want to play with mine as a mark maker, right? Mm -hmm. We have a little, we have a little circle there. So what if I put a little um, rubbing alcohol on the end of my straw and I take a little bit of a marker, because oh. I don't have the ink, right? I don't right. have what if I put a little of this marker on the end of my straw and honestly I don't know what's gonna happen but let's see I have a mark oh oh now that it's starting to run it's get oh look see what's happening let's see oh really nice yeah so the first the one was a little way, dry, but right. now that the ink is running it's getting it's 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 Filling in, that's cool. Oh, I like that. Nanette, how yeah. you never could have known that without trying. Exactly, exactly. So a very important thing that we've talked about and we, we need to emphasize is you must play, you must make those fun, magical mistakes in order to find something new. Right, yeah, and this, and, and what's, what's really fun about this is that I originally got the straws thinking I was going to do something else with them that I am familiar with, and I'll, I'll show you that in a second. But when I cut it, I thought, oh my goodness, there's a circle there. And I've really become enamored with the mark making that you do, Gail, with the circles that you put in things. I said, oh, let me try that and see. Are you and I was You're doing that with the right? So I'm jealous because I don't have any ink. So now I wanted to create my own, and now I've got ink. So tell us again, how to do that, just as a reminder. Yeah. So this is this is probably, truth be told, a Dunkin' Donuts straw. Right? <laughs> Great color, though. Because yeah, aren't they fun? Yes. Yeah, so, um, so my partner Bill go, uh, loves Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee. So he comes home with a lot of Dunkin' Donuts straws, and he uses them in his fishing life. For those of you who fish, you probably uh, know that. But anyway, we end up with a lot of them around, and I have used them as beads. I've used them in all kinds of other activities for oh. children. Oh. So I I keep them around. So anyway, it's Dunkin' Donuts straw. I cut it because. What I was going to do is use it as a roller to create marks with uh -huh. on the roller. But as I cut it, I just I, I it caught my attention the idea of the circle on the end, and I thought, oh, let me do that first. So, and then what I did to make the ink was first to dip it. I have a little again. This is um this is a a plastic container for fruit, cut fruit, and I right. love to keep these around because they're just the right size for, for materials. I put some rubbing alcohol on the end of the straw first, and then I took my big thick black marker here, and I added ink just sort of randomly to the top of the straw, and now you can see that it makes a circle. And depending on how much ink I put on, and what appears to be happening is, depending on how long, how long I let it dry. So it, seem, it appears to be that if I move pretty quickly from, it, from rubbing alcohol to marking, um, or to putting the ink on and then making my mark fast, that I'm getting, I'm getting a better mark, yeah. Okay. You have that one. And now that I've done a couple of them and there's ink already on my straw, I can dip that in my alcohol and now I'm going to get... You'll get a softer mark probably. Yeah. See how now this mark 
which is so interesting and the variation in marks and in, in uh, texture. And I was going to mention that when we write, we can write very softly or we could press very, well, this isn't a good marker to show you, but sorry. We could write softly, gently, or we could press really hard. Mm -hmm. And that will determine the marks that you get on your page later on. So the soft mark will stay soft, but the dark mark will make a really interesting black mark. So yeah. even when you're doing your automatic writing, emotionally, if a word comes up, that feels kind of intense or makes you feel that you want to express it more loudly and you're able to do that by pressing harder on the page. Yeah. yeah. So it's beyond the word, it's the ability to, to express that physically um, and emotionally and do that through your writing. And those are the words that are going to stand out. And those might be the words that you want to add later if you end up obscuring them. Yeah. Your last words, I call them. Yeah. And one other thing, Nanette, uh, we're talking about everyday tools. I found these Crayola kids markers. Mm -hmm. um, garage. Yeah. And experimenting with them, if I didn't have my little watercolor set, which I showed you before, I have a little travel set. I was trying to think how our guests today could do the same thing or something similar in their homes if they have simple tools like a marker or nail polish but in this case i'm going to use marker and i am going to take this hand sanitizer on my finger i could have used a brush but let's say i don't have a brush and this oh love that so i'm going to make a really pretty border around my piece and what I'm using here is, it's not uh, simple cardstock, it is watercolor paper. It comes in the store, I bought, I, I don't know, I think it comes 50 or 100 to a package. They're cards that come with envelopes and they're watercolor and you could use them to create your own cards. Yeah. So Love. that's what I'm using here. But I'm using some purple and some orange just to make a border with hand sanitizer. So yeah. I have paint, and I didn't even know that I had paint in the garage. And I will consider this a new paint box for me because it's there really you go. Cool. So yeah. we're able to see the marks yeah. through it. So it doesn't completely obliterate the marks, but it does spread them. Well, it did before they were wet. It spreads. <laughs> and then I'm going to go on top of this with black marker once it dries. Nice. So layering is really important because to me, the reason I layer in my artwork is I look at my life and our lives as layers and our history yeah. and the experiences that we have are layers. So there's no way that my life just has one layer. My life is mm. definitely tapestry of history, of memories, of things that stand out, of things that are dim in my memory and obscured and at my age kind of disappeared altogether. <laughs> uh, but the same with the artwork and the same with the creative process is don't feel tied to certain words. Uh, for instance, I would wrote, I just cut this out of a magazine, A Better Way to a Better Life. I might decide to cut some of those words out or to take some, I have some simple white paint here. It's a basic white titanium white paint, which we've talked about in the past. And I might decide to take the word a, a, a sorry, a better way, or just have the word way to a better life or a better life, or just, leave the word life in and cross that out completely. I could put all those words back. I could write them all again or I could find them again. So we're just playing here today, but the idea is don't feel like you have to create a masterpiece because I don't know anybody whose life is a masterpiece. Do you, Nanette? No. 
we might look at Facebook and think that everybody's living a dream life, but everybody has a history and everybody has challenges and obstacles going on in their lives. And it's really nice to be able to express that on a daily basis. And we're providing the tools to do that. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, what I love about this time that we share is that I know that because I commit to this, because I set this specific time aside for myself, that I honor that piece of me, right? I honor this, this unfolding, if you will. And I'm very, very clear that if I didn't say that on Tuesdays at noon, I am going to come together to create like this, that it's likely that I wouldn't do it with the kind of regularity that I'm now doing it. And I also know that, like I shared with my book, the doodles that are coming out, the, this is infusing a, a desire in me, an energy in me that is coming out in all kinds of other ways. And it's coloring the rest of my life to be, to make it so much more magical, if you will. You know, it's I just, love the way you just said that it's coloring your life. Yeah, it, it is. It is adding color. And truthfully, I just came back from a vacation with my family and on a daily basis, I struggle with some health issues and I woke up not feeling like I wanted to be creative today, <laughs> but I knew that I was meeting with Nanette and I woke up again with the challenge of those words fluttering through my head or the absence of those words. And this time, knowing that this time exists and the ability for me to meet with you, Nanette and others provides me with this connection that yeah. I would otherwise have and the ability to create and feel like I accomplished something for me which goes back to my little card that I created right uh, to remind myself that I need to be there for me on a daily basis not all day but even if it's just for 10 minutes for 15 minutes or part of the session if you say Nanette and Gail are meeting at a certain time and you're not available Yes, we tape it, but how nice is it to be in a room like this together yeah. and be able to yeah. talk together to speak with each other and see what we're creating. And your artwork takes on a whole new meaning and uh, picks up an energy that you wouldn't otherwise have by watching a video, which exists in myriad ways online. Yeah. yeah. Um, but doing this live, as far as I know, is a quite a unique experience. And that's what I love about it. Yeah. And, and for both of us, I mean, we're, and everyone who comes together with us, we're, we, we're having this opportunity. And who knew that I could create these fun little circles with the end of a straw and <laughs> a magic marker and some, and, and, and some rubbing alcohol, right? And you, and, and you sound super excited about it. And that's, yeah, and that's the thing is that, you know, and one of the, for me, my, I, before we came to this, I had already decided, had already come to understand and, and had full awareness of my word of the year. And my word of the year is play. And so for me, this, this is just, this, this really anchors why it's so important that we give ourselves these kinds of opportunities because now, not only do I know that I can make little funny red and black circles with <laughs> isopropyl alcohol and a straw, but it also now gives me the confidence to try other things in my life, right? And to, right. And to not be so stuck in doing things always the same way and, and to not, and to, and to appreciate that there are, there's more than one use for something, just like there's more than one kind of person. There's more, it just, there's, there's so much that comes from this. Well, yeah. You know, you I just reminded me of that. Yeah. Go on, go on. 
I just, I just have to pause for a minute and show you guys this. Gail saw this earlier when I was playing. This was, this was when I was first saying to myself, well, gee, if I don't have any ink, maybe I can make some with pen and rubbing alcohol. And in the, and so I, I scribbled a little bit and I did a bunch of other, you know, whatever. And it just looked like a mess. And when it was all done, there wasn't anything about it that I liked. And in particular, I especially didn't like that I tested with a black uh, uh, permanent marker. And you can probably see that there, this big dark line in the middle of everything. And I thought, ugh, that just is, what I'm, I'm never gonna be able to incorporate that into anything. So anyway, I just wanted to stop and pause for a minute and show you guys what's beginning to appear here. Like I took this page and I kept playing with it and now, and I took the mark making idea and rather than having the black ink, I used a red ink. And then what I decided to try was, well, what if I put the rubbing alcohol on the end of the straw and I put this, that down on the page, and then I added the red pen. What happens? And you'll see that it gets kind of this soft, fuzzy circle that appears. Very cool. All new experience. And what, what's really fun for me about this is I'm, it's actually starting to be done, become something that I'm okay with. I think it's kind of cool. And my guess is that I will now, and as Gail was talking about layering, some of you saw me do this um, in one of our last sessions, I started tearing up. So these are pieces of this page, right? And what if I were to come now and lay some of these on top of what I've created here? So what that was cool. I you even Right, you could even put words, some of your words on those pieces of paper and layer it on top. Exactly. So your word of the year or your, your concepts for the year could be, become part of that um, interesting little design that you made. Yeah, and, and it just continues to expand. So. so the play, this is something I was watching my grandchildren play. They were visiting... Um, and I was watching them. I set up a, an art table for them in the garage. And the thing that they aren't able to do yet, well, maybe the six-year-old is beginning to, they cannot add words yet to their, their play. Yeah. And so that's the advantage that we have. We're able to play like we did when we were children, freely and without judgment. And yet we are still able to add um, ideas and concepts and uh, how, however you want to use it, just words that have any kind of meaning to us, to our playful uh, artwork yeah. or doodles or mandalas, whatever it might be. And yeah. both of those things together are what make a creative life and a creative practice so much more memorable to us. Yeah. And I'm grateful for that, to be able yeah. to do both those things. Because there was a time, probably 10 years ago, where I would not have known to do anything but glue words from a magazine on a page, and I would have been stuck. But mm -hmm. that thing, different artwork and learning from different teachers and mostly playing and experimenting has given me the opportunity to create really interesting pages. And the other thing I want to say is that I do have several types of journals, like Nanette has her notebook, and they're not filled yet. This one's pretty empty because I thought I would start a new one for 2018. But you could take each of these separate pages and I could tear this in half, which I'll do right now. And perhaps next week, Nanette, you could show us ways that we can combine these pages to create our own journal, our own 
little scrapbook. And yeah. we can use these in the, in the future. They don't have to stand alone. They could become part of a story. Yes. So yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait for you to show us that. And let me just show you one other example of something that I did like that. I don't remember why I did it, but I had a piece of paper. Um, I don't know if it's watercolor paper, but what I did was I took it and did this accordion thing that we did when we were kids, right? Like paper yeah. airplane accordion. And I folded it this way. And if I choose to, I'm going to have these pages that I'm going to paint over with white and put things inside of them. And this is the beginning of a, I guess it was a journal spread that I tried to do with words and pictures. And this is just simply collage papers inside and mm -hmm. more words. And I have my own little book. Nice. Yeah, so you could do it this way or you could create separate pages or you could write in a journal that exists, in a book that exists. So any, I think I'm going to add a little bit of color to this one. As much as I love the black and white, I'm thinking this might become more interesting with a little bit of color. And it's very soft. I have a soft green here. Oh, it's okay. So this is a great <laughs> example. I just made a mess or what you would consider a mess. And I'm okay with that because I have white paint and I can go over it with white paint and do whatever I want on top of it later on when it dries. Mm. There's no end, no end to what you could do. No limits, no boundaries. It's your page. It's your life. And it's your artwork and I'm actually enjoying obscuring it. I'm going to put words on here in a little while when it dries. So Nanette, any oh, words? That's what? interesting. Pardon so me? I, so I, I, I just smudged a little bit with my finger and some of the marks here. Um, yeah, so I, so I decided to explore a little bit what would happen if I took some of those pages, some of those pieces actually, and added them here. Just random, torn segments, pieces. I get, you know, they're, they're uh, actually what's coming to me is they're threads. They're, Thread. woven, they're threads, they're woven threads. Pieces of, yeah, yeah, they're threads. And I purposefully wrote in pencil on one of these because I, I I didn't want it to be so bold. I wanted it to be softer. But had I wanted an expression to come forward with, with real definition, then I could have used a really dark, heavy way of writing. It's just interesting to observe and for me, what happens too is when I allow myself to not overthink what's happening, that the piece starts to speak to me of its own as it evolves. Right? So Nanette, if you weren't here, I'm not going to be able to do what I wanted because my eyes are not good enough, but you were talking about threads and I have a sewing kit here. Mm. And you just reminded me that I could easily sew through my page. Oh, if I, yes. Yeah. If only I could get the, the thread. <laughs> the thread <laughs> in the needle. That would be the challenge today is getting the thread in the needle because you really just inspired me. Oh, I love that. To sew through. I can't do it, though. My eyes are way too... Uh, I'm getting it, too it, Well, and so as an alternative, in, in, it... it it would be possible. So as you said, I have thread here. I thought, oh my goodness, I can glue thread. Right, on I'm going to glue it on. Right. I'm going to glue the thread on. To remind me that there's threads. Oh, I even have another idea. I'm going to tear 
this and I'm going to tear this and I'm going to tie the threads around the two spaces. Mm -hmm. so, nice. I can't sew right now, but I can add the thread here. Can you see that? Yes. So I'm just putting it inside those cutouts that I did and I'm going to glue behind them later on. So I could actually even hang something from there, whether it's a bead or how about the piece of the straw, or I could find an old earring, just something mm -hmm. that will dangle from here that'll make this actually even more exciting. Not that yeah. it needs to be more exciting, but why not? You gave me an idea. We're here yeah. together. I'm going to play off of what you suggested. Whoops. Yeah, and, um, yeah, so I think on some of my, so I like the idea of the pencil in here too, softening some of the colors a little bit. Um, feels, yeah, so. Nanette, you were going to try to draw with um, a match, with a matchstick. Oh, I'm you know what? I that. Yes. Oh, you know that? I'm going to try that. Here. So, yes, thank you for that reminder. So, um, oh, <laughs> we light candles in my house almost every day. And on the, on the table, I keep a little container to throw the match heads in. And I realized I hadn't thrown them away from last night. And when we were playing with, well, what would make ink or charcoal or something dark, Yes, you know what? I'm going to try that. I was, so this is my words and my lady from before. You guys see that? Yeah, here you go. And she needs, she needs some, she needs some, some edge. So I'm going to go, I'm going to try this a couple different ways. One, and I've never done this before. So you guys are trying along with me. So I'm so going to try, you try this at home. <laughs> yes, right. Do try this at home. What's the worst that can happen, right? Here, I'm so, doing it. I'm, I'm sticking, I'm sticking, yeah, I'm sticking the match. Oh, there you, yeah, you got it. So yeah, I, what I did was it, I dipped it in the alcohol, in the, um, the hand sanitizer and it's yeah. getting really PC, but I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the charcoal is starting to come off the match a little bit, but it's definitely, um, and yeah. Oh, I like that. So. Again, the idea here is if you Play. don't have fancy charcoal at home, guess what? I just made some. Look, look at me, Nanette. Look at this. Oh, <laughs> I'm drawing a matchstick. Yeah. That has a little bit of uh, hand sanitizer on it. So, okay. there, I mean, this point that we keep stressing is that don't feel like you have to wait to get the materials that you think you need when all you need are some matches and hand sanitizer. Right. And a piece of paper, any piece of paper, cardboard okay. from a cereal box, anything that you could find. Yeah, and so just for giggles, I grabbed, so here I've been working on top of a piece of um, paper towel, right? And I could certainly, here I'm just smudging the scraps of the charcoal that fell off the match, and I'm creating marks in a way that I could then, some of you might remember the other day, I, um, when, in one of our previous videos, you saw me make a, a figure out of torn paper towel. So now I have a piece of paper towel that has some, some, color to it it's a little gray now it's not particularly organized but you know once this could be incorporated into just about anything ah and look i've been looking all over for this and there it is <laughs> under my paper towel right so, before very eyes yeah so any any paper and what i i also wanted to experiment with the possibility that if i dip this kleenex in the rubbing alcohol and then I add some pen to that. Oops, happy accident. I just dripped alcohol on my creation. And? The world. It's and there. you're okay with that? 
And I'm okay with it. It's a new mark. So, and here, oh yeah, this is fun. It's much more subtle. I don't know if you can even see it. What is um, it? So I put rubbing alcohol. I dipped the corner of the tissue, Kleenex, just ordinary Kleenex, not fancy tissue paper, just Kleenex. I dipped the corner of it in, yeah, you can't really see the color coming through, but trust me, it's coming through. It's a little bit of a of, of pinky. You dip it off. in that part, sorry. Yeah, so I dipped it in the rubbing alcohol, and now I'm just coloring. I'm just putting a couple of marks on it with this red, an ordinary red pen. Uh huh. And I'm getting a. Do you have colored tissue paper? Yeah, a little bit of a, a tone to it that I could then put on top of. One of the things I love about using tissue like this is. So I'd, and I'm, sometimes I don't feel like I want my words to be so obvious. So I can put this now, this toned tissue paper right on top of those words. And it has a whole different feeling. Awesome. That's great. Whole different feeling. Um, I just found a piece of ribbon. I didn't plan on using all these tools. I was fine with just black and white ink, but suddenly you're inspiring me to try new tricks. And... I'm thinking of, I was trying to remind myself that in my artwork, I wanted to add more gold this year because I always ah. love what I get. And I found a gold ribbon, a wire nice. ribbon that I guess came with gift wrap over the holidays. And I'm going to tie that, literally tie that into my piece as a reminder to have that. I tied it to the thread that was hanging. Beautiful. It almost looks like a little bow. So you could attach anything to this piece that you're doing as a reminder to yourself for the coming year of what you would like to add. So if it's a color that reminds you of it, if it's a piece of fabric, uh, a piece of thread, a word, uh, words from a song that you've remembered, write it down, put it down there and save it and know where this is. And perhaps you'll put it in a journal once Nanette teaches us how to do that next week, or most of you may know how already. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. So I think we are getting close to the end of our time here for today. Finishing up, adding some touches. I put some hair on my lady. You can't really see it, but I always like my ladies to have hair. Lots Fine. of hair. <laughs> so, so all of your pieces, Nanette, do they all have words and um, color or do some have just, are some just black and white? What do you have in front of you? So right, so I have, I have, this one is black and white and it's <laughs> words and it's our, <coughs> this is our simple figure, arms outstretched. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh no. And she is holding she is holding all of the possibilities of the new year. She's oh. her arms are open. Yes. She is just letting all of those possibilities float out in she's 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 speaking mm -hmm. her desires, right? right? And letting them go to be brought to life mm -hmm. in the universe. Beautiful. So I'm feeling like there's probably something else that I will add underneath here. I love that idea of thinking about incorporating an element, uh -huh. gold or wood or... Um, a button, it could be anything. Yeah, something. And of course we have, actually, you know what needs to be here? What? Seeds, our seeds. Oh no! We're okay. the day. Yes. Because, can you explain why, Nanette? Just for anybody who's new, who's tuning in. Yeah. So, so if you haven't come to play with us before, to create with us before, Gail and I first came together years ago 
to mm. create a series of workshops. And one of our favorite workshops from that series is called Seed the Day. And the idea there. Like Seize the Day? Like That's Seize the Day, only we're seeding it. And we're seeding it because we're taking this opportunity. Let me see if I can get that towards you. There we go. We're taking this opportunity to seed the beautiful possibility of the creation of all that there is available to us in our lives. And we also, what I love about the idea, the concept of seeds is that seeds need to be nurtured to grow, right? They're, they need to be nurtured to grow. And so we are here together in our creative time here in the hearth life circle our purpose is to seed the day to seed that creative energy and to 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 make it possible for all of us to blossom into these beautiful beings that we are intended to be and and we do that simply by coming together to create so uh Nanette, I didn't have, I mean, I didn't, I, for, I forgot to bring the seeds to the table right now, but I just found some sesame seeds in my kitchen where I am right now. Yes. Toasted sesame seeds. And I'm just adding a bunch of them, almost like a necklace to this lady who's here, who is probably me. Um, but it's a reminder to seize the day and seed the day um, every day. Yeah. And they're very close to my heart. Yeah. And yeah. so says I have, I have like, sesame seeds also that I will add <laughs> in the bottom here for sure. Yes. Yeah, I have some glad to have thought of that. Get out. Yeah. Um, we also showed you last week, and I believe not last week, but a few the last class, how we sometimes can add dried flowers or petals. Yes. Before color so if you don't have paint you may have some dried flowers laying around even if you live up north it's possible that you have flowers or um, even silk flowers in your house and you could add those with glue to your piece as well if you want to add some color yeah. and I, I may be doing that as well but I'm more than happy and more than satisfied to leave my piece black and white because that's all that I need today is just a reminder to put my words down, my intentions, my thoughts, my feelings. So even if it was just this, yeah, no color, no butterfly, and no words, that's fine. If all you have is a piece of paper, just do it. Just do it. You could always add to it later or you could leave it as it is. And I love that for those who are art journaling and doing other mixed media, one of the things that I am beginning to do is to collect these little scribbles, these seeming nothings, right? They are expressions of me. They are unique creations, whether, like I say, this just looks like a bunch of scribble right now, but it will be able to take on a life in some other form in some project, in something that we do as we move forward. And also what I've come to appreciate is that often in these kinds of um, just free creation where, where there's, there really is no intention other than to nurture your creative self, when I come back to this later, like when, when I was sitting here just looking at it, showing it to all of you in the video, it it dawned on me that I was seeing weaving, that I was seeing threads. That, when I look at it again tomorrow, I may see something right. else too. Right. And what I love about that is when you stay in the space of being free to continue to create, I can then use that element and, and bring some new life to this by adding something else if I choose or simply leaving it the way it is. Right. So it, it, it's, um, I, I remain open to the possibility that new things might happen with this particular piece or not. Or not. And, yeah. And that's really fun, I think. So 
Yeah, so we should share with everybody how they can continue to stay connected with us. Sure, do that. We will continue to be creating these videos for you guys. <clears throat> um, and and it's our hope that anyone who is interested in, in continuing to receive additional support to do these kinds of activities, that you'll reach out to us, either to Gail directly or to myself, where you'll find us on Facebook, we're playing in the Creative Hearth, uh, Creative Hearths and Healing Circle. We, um, yeah, and we are cultivating this particular activity, this particular time and space as our Hearth Life Circle for those of you who really want to commit to yourself and to your creative process this year. Hope that you will join us. We will, we are still in the process of ironing out what the frequency of this is going to look like, but um, our intention is to continue to bring new experiences to you on a regular basis. And we're yeah, so excited about that. So excited about that. And you can, you can, um, yeah, so it's Hearth Life Circle. And um, look for our other Facebook? videos. Sorry? On Facebook? Yes. Um, Creative Hearts and Healing Circle on Facebook. Uh, Hearth Life Circle is, um, those are the headings for the videos. And um, yeah, and we'll, and, and like I say, if you are watching this video, if you stumbled on us somehow, you did not find us through any traditional channels, uh, just look in the in the comments on the video, you'll see ways to connect to us. We would love for you to reach out because we also are looking, we wanna know what it is that, that you all would like to, to be inspired to do and um, how, and we especially wanna hear how this is serving you to continue to expand your creative activities and expand your life, enhance your life. And that's really at the end of the day. But it's definitely a, gr a, a group and a team effort here. Uh, yeah. And you're, and you're part of it. It's not just Nanette and I. The main thing is to connect, especially yeah. those who aren't able to connect with others creatively on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. We are here for you. Yeah. Yeah. We and, I, and thank you for sharing that, Gail, because you're reminding me that one of the things that we're really clear about is that there are people in the world who are not able for any variety of reasons to go out and get to in-person workshops. And this is a wonderful opportunity for you within the safety and the confines of your own home to just become a part of something that that is intended to nurture your creative growth. So You know, uh, the word tribe comes to me and I remember taking a workshop, a live workshop, and people were talking about who's in your tribe. And honestly, locally, I don't have anybody who I could be creative with other than you. And this provides so much opportunity to meet people from anywhere in the world. Right. Uh, you could be, I could be creating with somebody in Australia right now or New Zealand, and I have um, yes. a workshop on, on Facebook, but never live. Yeah. So this is definitely a unique opportunity to make new friends, new connections, and be inspired by people who you wouldn't naturally have the ability to meet with. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I love so much about this technology and what it does for us, making that all possible. So, and I'm so, so grateful to my dear friend, Gail, Aww. for continuing to shine the light of, of, just being such a beautiful creative soul and encouraging me to come together with you so that we could bring this out to the world. Not and 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 because the truth is that it's so powerful for us as individuals too. You know, Gail shared this today that she wasn't really feeling it this morning. And I was not feeling at all no and truth be told i could have easily said wow it's been such a long two weeks i really would prefer to just not do this but because we committed to each other and to this process and to our creative practice we're here and we're showing up and that and and 
the beauty, the, the extension of that is that, boy, I feel so much more alive. I mm. feel so much better. And I'm really, really happy to have spent this time. And gee, I learned how to paint with straws. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? You'll never look at a straw again the same in the same way. Yeah, exactly. And just a, a, as a as a final thing, and I know we're going to be doing some podcasts soon, is that hopefully whatever we're doing here will have you taking your walk or your stroll or drinking your morning tea or coffee with a whole new perspective on what's available to you. You're going to be finding figures in everything and words that you never would have imagined are going to jump out it from each page to you yeah. uh, because of this practice. Yeah. yeah. Whether you're in snowy Canada or in sunny Australia or wherever you are at this point, yeah. uh, I'm in Florida today and I'll be in Canada at the end of the month and hopefully we'll be connecting through the zoom chat room again, uh, me in Canada and Nanette in Florida. Mm -hmm. How magical is that? How incredible yeah. is that? Yeah, very cool. Yeah, so, I, I just love it. Love it's it, love it. It's exciting. So we hope that you enjoyed creating with us today. And we look forward to seeing you again, either in the Creative Hearts page, uh, watching our videos. We have some YouTube videos. And uh, stay inspired. Yes. And keep creating, even if it's just a doodle. Yeah, 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 yeah. No yeah. doodle, just a doodle. <laughs> there you go. All right. Bye for now, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.